Okay, so today I just wanted to talk about a couple things that Hasbro has been doing uh, with with the way they've been selling their products. And again, it, this is in no way putting shade on Hasbro or trying to criticize in a negative light uh, what they're doing. This is merely um, a chance, an opportunity for me to recommend a few things they could do to change their approach, to change their strategy or to change their policies with regard uh, distributing or manufacturing or producing their products. Now for today's discussion, we will be focusing on two things that I thought was significant that Hasbro has been doing. And the first one is the one per case assortment of certain figures uh, for, for various lines. And the second one is this new closed uh, packaging where it's a plastic free uh, packaging. So I know a lot of people have already spoken about this, but I just wanted to share my thoughts. So let's begin with this one per case uh, thing, this one per case assortment that Hasbro has. You know, Hasbro has an assortment for figures. They have a budget and they want to put a good mix in it and all that. That's all well and good. To me, that's fine as long as you do it properly. The sad fact is I don't think they're doing it properly because they are short packing figures and characters that are very, very popular. And it's bound to happen in any case assortment. I get it. Not all figures are going to be very popular, but wouldn't it be better if the entire case assortment is comprised of figures. 90% of the figures would be something everybody wanted instead of just one figure everybody wants and the rest of the figures people just don't care for. Now, I'm just speculating here, okay? Now, there is this thing that was invented decades ago. It's called marketing research. I'm just putting it out there. Marketing research involves trying to figure, one of the things that marketing research does is they try to get information about the end user of a certain product just to see what they actually want you know um, and this is not nuclear physics this is not complicated science it really is just literally asking people what they want what they need uh, how do we give it to them and you can do this through electronic surveys you can do it through person to person you can do it through mail you can do it through conventions you can do it in a plethora of ways you can find information about your customers now for instance this particular wave you know i've spoken about it the velocitron deluxe class wave assortment wave one the whole wave is comprised of repaints except for one figure the new figure in the wave, it's the brand new figure. It is one in a case of eight repaints. So seven repaints, one new figure. Now, given the fact that Hasbro is trying to say, now, oh, okay, if you're a retailer, we're going to give you solid cases of each figure. Why don't you just do that for all the figures? Solid cases, why even do an assortment? And if you're going to do an assortment, why even make an assortment with only one figure one new figure in the assortment because you know in most territories particularly in asia people are wary about buying solid cases because what if the figure doesn't sell so retailers are going for the assortment so if you know that make sure that the assortment it actually makes sense now i don't want the entire thing to be like cosmos right you could have at least put three two or three pieces cosmos and five repaints it's okay to short pack the obscure, unpopular characters, but to short pack a popular character, and on top of that is a brand new mold and sculpt and new figure, that's just, that's just not fair. That's just, that just doesn't make sense, even from a business standpoint. Okay, this Spider-Man figure right here, it's the same with the previous wave with the classic Spider-Man suit, but the black suit in Spider-Man, Fine, given that every single figure in that wave is one per case, fine. But you have like four villains, two minor heroes, one hero, and uh, I don't know, uh, Ben Riley, I think. Okay, fine. So you, you can imagine that a lot of the people, a lot of the fans are going to go for the heroes. They're going to go after Spider-Man. And you put one of this guy in the case and a bunch of villains. Because... <sighs> 
I think they could have just put Ben Riley and Spider Man, like give them solid cases, and then the assortment could have been all the villains. But if you put a hero with all the villains in a case, obviously everyone's gonna go for the hero. I mean, you don't need a ton of marketing research to do that. And like I said, had the case been a lot of in-demand figures, like if you put Spider-Man with uh, with with uh, Gwen Stacy or no, Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider, maybe you put a Venom figure in it. You put uh, I don't know a Lasher, maybe Punisher or. If not the Punisher, maybe you can put the Kingpin or I, I know it might not make sense from a budget standpoint. But if you put all desirable figures, then that one per case is not going to matter because people are just going to buy the case. But the fact of the matter is you put one figure per case that's the most desirable and everything else nobody could care for. And that I don't know how they can fix that. Either they stop making. I don't want to say. How, what adjective can I use? Stop making undesirable figures. Or if you have to make undesirable figures or less than desirable figures, make them exclusives. But the regular release figures, the limited assortment figures, make them very desirable so that people actually want to buy the entire, ca entire case. And then lastly, like Fennec, Fennec Shan. I mean, she was so popular. The actress is very popular. And you put her in the Star Wars... A TV show. Everyone's gonna go after her. So why put one per case? I mean, they had to put some minor characters. I mean, come on. Seriously? You honestly think people are gonna buy the entire case for the minor characters? It doesn't take a great amount of brain cells to figure this out. I don't know how they are doing the assortment. And please stop telling me it's the budget because you've already charged an arm and a leg and a kidney and a stomach and a liver for your products, you would have had enough capital to fund future releases. So please stop telling me it's the budget because people are gonna pay for premium, well-made products. Okay, that's that for one per case. Let's talk about this closed packaging. I do appreciate what Hasbro is trying to do, trying to be environmentally friendly and all that, but I think they're missing the point about the packaging. In the collecting world, and even as a kid, you know, you want to see the toy before you buy it. You don't want to rip open the box and see like, oh, okay, I don't like it and put it back. You have to be able to see the toy and not just the artwork. The artwork can be deceiving. Seriously, you want to be able to see it. And just by looking at the real thing, you can almost feel what it is. So that experience of looking at the actual product is being denied by this new packaging. And a lot of people have already said a lot of things that this is probably going to go down in history as the worst business decision. It's great for the environment, but, you know, people are going to swap out figures. They're going to return it. A lot of defects are going to be in figures that they can't see. So there are going to be a lot of return figures. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, especially here in Asia. Here in Manila, it is like pulling a tooth just to return an item. Here in, in Manila, at least, or... I think I can speak for the rest of Asia. Once the store gets your money, they don't want to give it back to you. So if you try to return something, they're going to make it hell for you to get your money back. They want you to just pick another item, exchange it for something else. But money back, that is unheard of in most, at least here in Manila or in the Philippines or in most Asian markets. Once they get the money, they want to hang on to it. They don't want to return it to you. So it's... Of course, they can return it. It's just they're going to make it difficult for you to get your money back. So it's the reality we have. I mean, we just roll with it. But it's not so much as returning things. But when you pick up something, you want to be able to see it right away without opening the darn thing. So I hope they change that. Now, here's a few suggestions. This one seems to be working for Transformers. The plastic-free packaging that's open. The only problem with this one is you can't keep figures mint in box. Dust is going to come in. Even on store shelves, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get dust. You know, somebody might spill some juice by mistake, a customer or what. So it's very open. But this kind of solves the problem by a bit. It, it's not great, but you get to see the product at least. So if they could do that with Marvel, maybe 
put extra twisties so it's a lot more difficult to remove it. I mean, sure, it's not going to stop people from returning and swapping figures, but at least you get to see what's inside. The other thing is, maybe they can do something like this, like a book cover. Remove the plastic, keep it open, much like what they did with the Skywalker Strikes. At least the customer can actually see the product before purchasing it. They can see if there's a defect or something like that without really opening the product. But then, you know, if you're afraid of theft and all that, just put extra, extra twist ties or extra twisties or something like that. Or, I don't know, there has to be a way to do so. Or better yet, I heard Hasbro said that for collectible items, they're still going to keep plastic on it, like the bubble uh, on a card. They're going to use starch-based plastics. I'm like, oh my god, you're into starch-based plastic? Why not continue this kind of packaging using starch-based plastic? It's just a thought. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm sure if you have starch-based plastic, you can do something like this that's starch-based that will degrade over a few decades. But still, it's clear, right? Right? I mean, if you're willing to do starch-based plastic on that kind of packaging, What's stopping you from doing it for this packaging? For this one? For this one? I mean, I'm just putting it out there, okay? Hasbro's probably not listening or watching this video, but I'm hoping somebody can present that idea to them and maybe we can have better, better output uh, in the coming years. So there you go, folks. Uh, those are my thoughts on these two issues we're facing with Hasbro's packaging. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, you think it's a good idea for one per case? Should it be a solid case? Or you think they should keep doing this plastic-free packaging without the plastic? Or they should just go back to their plastic and you know harm the environment a little bit? Let me know in the comments. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.